Hey everybody, welcome back to Vampire. Uh, I think we might have started a little bit further back of where we ended here, but we'll see. We'll we'll keep heading towards uh, Petrescu's house and see if we um, see if we end up anywhere near where we ended last time. Oh, hello, free food. Nope. Wait. What? <laughs> Is he dead? Is that? I don't know. Oh, look at this. I'm hearing voices. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I feel like we started in a different spot than where we ended, which is kind of weird. Uh, but either way, this is, uh, looks like Petrescu's house. So, I'm just gonna invite myself in. What? What do you want? Leave me alone. Good evening, sir. I'm Dr. Reed. I'm looking for Nurse Dorothy Crane. There is no Dorothy Crane here. Now goodbye. I'm afraid well, I'm pretty this sure that's not true. It says the opposite, sir. Really? Well, I'm afraid I'm going to close this door right now. Go bother someone else, Mr. Doctor. To enter that house, I must discover who this man really is. Oh! Maybe I could start by observing what he's up to. Let's observe, then. Investigate his actions. Okay, so... Does he have windows? I'm sure he does. Play a little I Spy. I can't get through here. Let's check the other side. I've lost track of him. This one's locked, I too. Enter. So, how do we get in there, I wonder? You would think maybe you could jump up there? And by jump, I just mean, like, vampire my way? <laughs> Me again. I will return later. Oh, house is empty. What? Oh, okay. We were actually in the right spot. I gotcha. He left out his back door. Who's he gonna go talk to here? There she is. It's liars. A strange man was at the door with a pass for our medical facility. I refused him entry. Darius, how could you know he didn't need our help? What is she doing exactly? His clothes were too finely tailored to be for Whitechapel. Yeah, that's a good read. Perhaps just a friend of that stray poet who is always about. Richard Nidercott? No, not of the same cloth, this man. I suspect some machination from that journalist. Clayton Darby? Is he <laughs> still asking questions? So there's two names yes. now of... That we can I maybe saw him drifting around St. Mary's Church. I swear he is tracking me just downwind. Gotcha. Alright, so we got new hints for this guy. Darius is the right arm of Dorothy Crane. Bronchitis. I must Find talk to that journalist. Richard Nethercott and Clayton they must know Darby. About Darius. Nearby the church they just mentioned. He said, downwind the church. Okay, let's check out... Do we have listings for them? Not really. That's okay. I kind of, I like, I enjoy the social engineering aspects. Cheap price, good quality. Come on, take a look. Welcome, sir. Afraid. Please, take a browse of my wares. I am Dr. Reed. I would like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Doctor? Interesting. I'm Barrett Lewis. Usually I don't have time to waste with talk, but at this hour of the night I can hardly refuse. Okay, um... You'll probably have some information. This guy sees a lot of have stuff. Have you heard of a nurse by. called Dorothy Crane? Nurse Crane? So the bitch really is a nurse then? <laughs> Jesus. I always thought she was just some crafty foreigner, that one. The bitch really is a nurse? Yes, she's a nurse. And quite a good one. 
One thing I've been wondering if the choices of what we say, does that dictate us getting a hint or not? Dorothea Craniu. Something like that. So he knows a real name. Flee in the war, I was told. That doesn't explain why she irritates you so much. Your precious nurse crane gives away medical supplies and prescriptions mm -hmm. for free. I offered to sell it for a fair cut, but no. Miss Crane wanted to play the quiet saint. See, the problem here is going to be like... So she's giving away drugs and medicine for free. But on the other side, it's probably going to be something about, like, you know, she just wants to help people and these people don't have access, they can't afford it or whatever, and someone has to help them, if I were to guess. How is business around here? Business? I have no business. Between this racket, theft, and customers getting scared, I'm losing money every day. I see. Sounds like you blame someone in particular for your situation. It's no secret Joe Peterson spends his time harassing merchants. But with me, he's trying to put me out of business once and for all. Joe Peterson. Okay, this guy actually does know quite a bit. Joe's extortions put Barrett Lewis in a tough financial situation. Okay. And Barrett's in a tough financial situation because of Joe's extortions. Fair enough. As a merchant, you see Whitechapel every day. Have you noticed anything out of the ordinary recently? Well, you mean besides the epidemic, the war, and all the usual crap? As long as I can remember, this part of town has been a bottomless pit, and no sign of the bottom yet. Hmm. Violence is increasing in the borough. Yeah. A few nights ago, some blokes jumped me, came out of one of the condemned workshops. Fever. Madness, something like that. Where did this happen? Why did you go there? In the closed workshops nearby. I worked there as an apprentice in better days. Now I only go to find trinkets or tools. Too bad I was mugged though. There was good money in that little box of loot I lost. Oh, I bet you we could find it. New investigation. Have you been hurt? No, but that's only because I ran like hell. Those men were raving lunatics, I tell you. Not even able to speak anymore, just screaming. Okay, uh, what about personal questions? Nothing. Okay, so we'll find out more about him. What does he sell? Right, Show me what you have. We know Milton sells, like, gun stuff. We don't, like, it's interesting. We don't have a ton of money. It, it does make me reconsider breaking stuff down all the time. Like, look at these. Ring, uh, good resale value. Oh, you can't even break that one down. It just says good resale value, where these ones say it can be recycled. I guess I should sell this. Um, and then what we want to do is kind of make a list of upgrades that we want at some point, and then come and just execute that. Cool. And right, where's Clay? Clayton. Clayton, Clayton, Clayton. Are you Clayton? Excuse me, sir. I have a few questions for you. Another journalist? Nope, this is Joe. I didn't answer the first one, so piss off. I'm not a journalist, I'm a doctor. A doctor, you say? It's quite a rare breed in this part of town. So I really? noticed. But still, here I am. Dr. Jonathan Reed, at your service. I'm Joe Peterson to some, but Colossus Joe to most. And I don't remember asking for your service, sir. <laughs> Jesus. Have you heard of a nurse named Dorothy Crane? She's a colleague of mine and is supposed to live around here. Dorothy Crane? See, like, yeah, this is one of my... One of the few good souls who dare to help the sick around here. Could you please tell me more about her? She's a nice girl. Tries to help the migrants. Yeah, see? I offered to give her a hand, but she said my reputation would attract too much attention. There's a lot of situations where um, we know information, but we still kind of ask about it. And, like, I guess we could perceive it as, um, you know, we don't want to just, like, be too forward. And we don't want these guys to get freaked out. But, um... We knew, we know where Dorothy is. We just saw her, and now we ask him, like, where does she live? That kind of stuff, it kind of takes you out of it a little bit. May I ask what you do around here? I'll do whatever I want, and sometimes even more. Now, sod off. Is this the guy that we saw at the very beginning? How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no Must pride be. in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well, too. A job? <laughs> so you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the Wet Boot Boys, a oh, gang from the, the WBB. Docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. 
Not the WBB. Most people don't become thugs when unemployed. This is a choice you made. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons, and that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by all means necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Ooh, okay. So, Barrett, the guy selling stuff, Joe's extortions. Okay, so, oh, I'm sorry. This, okay, so I guess this is why we call him out on the bullying for extortions. I thought we were referring to the guy at the beginning of this area, but I guess not. Joe and Barrett used to be good friends, but now uh, Joe extor extortions put Barris or Barrett in a tough situation. Gotcha. It's tough to keep track of these guys sometimes, especially when you, like, just meet them. Um, is it... Maybe it's these two that we met at the beginning. Benjamin's a war veteran. I think so. Okay. Barrett Lewis. Fine, same thing. According to you, physicians are scarce in this part of town. Why is that? Not familiar with this neighborhood, are you? I guess your fancy colleagues are too afraid of being stabbed in the back. This part of town does have quite a reputation. Would you say it's justified? Totally. Look at me, for instance. I always look my opponent in the eye before knocking him out. <laughs> yeah, you, you're definitely on the Goodbye, up Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. Interesting stuff. All right. I, I can definitely feel the feed coming soon. I've had some people ask me to do, like, a pacifist playthrough. I don't think... Like, that's... I totally get uh, the appeal of it. Um, but by the same token, I kind of feel that it, like, removes, like, one of the core mechanics from the game. Soon the time will come. Excuse me, sir. Are you familiar with this part of town? Not really. Named Clayton Darby, reporter. Sorry, I'm new to Whitechapel. But perhaps you could help me, since you're a journalist. My name is Jonathan Reed. Dr. Reed, the famous surgeon. I'll gladly help if I'm able, sir. Okay, um... We'll get into this, but let's ask him first of all about what he's doing here. Not afraid about going out at night? Have you any idea of the danger you face in these streets at night? I've had to run and hide more than once from frenzied mobs incensed by the fever. Yeah, you're lucky that's all. Do you think the flu is really responsible for this, Doctor? <laughs> yeah, it's not a simple epidemic. I'm convinced there is more at work here than a simple epidemic. Really? <sighs> to be honest, I could say the same. Some of the sick I saw or heard of. My God, what happened to them? What is a journalist doing in this borough after sunset? He goes where none of his colleagues would dare to go, to inform the country. Hmm. So you risk your life to reveal the truth. I saw many reporters do the same during the war. Whitechapel is the crucible of so many untold stories and tragedies. I want people to know them. Okay, so he's like... Wants newspapers to print the truth about Whitechapel situations. Seems like a, like a noble guy. Got fatigue. And, uh... Pretty high, like... Level. As well. So, his mesmerized level is way above ours. Do you need assistance? That would be nice of you, Doctor. Who knows what I may have caught you in my investigation. Um... Yeah, we can give them. If you persist in investigating the most pox-ridden boroughs of London, you must accept the risks. Thank you, sir. Okay. What else do we have here? Why are the newspapers keeping silent about the Spanish influenza? It's as though none of you care. There's a war going on. People shouldn't be demoralized by news of deadly diseases. I served in France. Our top priority must be to put an end to this butchery. This war must stop now. Sir, streets are a battlefield too. An invisible and untold war is going on, and it must be stopped. Okay. No hints. Let's ask him the one other what thing in ego? here. That's quite public is interested. You. But is the public interested? Not at all, sir. <laughs> and that's why I'm an independent okay. journalist, hoping Classic. to sell some stories. 
I heard you're investigating an underground medical dispensary in Whitechapel. Which we know the location what do you know of. About it? Not much, I'm afraid. Dorothea they are is running it. And I'm not really an acquaintance of this. Why do you care? Well, um. Yeah. It's confidential. Speaking as a doctor, I'm sure you. Not sure we want to give that information sure to this you're guy. You're not just concerned about the repercussions that a scandal involving a certain nurse crane <laughs> from the Pembroke <laughs> Hospital would bring. Okay, Without maybe. a doubt, you are a damn fine journalist, Mr. Darby. What do you know of her accomplice, a man named Darius? I don't know much about the man. He's very cautious. Never goes out. Doesn't seem to have any friends or family. So you notice uh, when we have like the three pronged answers with the red lines, uh, it seems like okay. So we give a different, we can kind of direct where the conversation goes. But at least the way that it's appeared so far is we always tend to get the same information out of it. So whether we would say, oh, we have a nurse that's compromised, we'd be like, oh yeah, Dorothy. Or if we say, oh, it's confidential, we'd be like, well, I know about Dorothy. You know what I mean? Kind of interesting. He has no relatives at all. No. Except for that strange man, a poet named Richard Nithercott, who sometimes he also comes mentioned. By. Darius would never let him in. Where can I find this Mr. Nithercott? He spends most of his time lurking around Whitechapel, talking to himself or declaring verses. These days, you can usually find him behind the church. Okay. He never goes out? No. A few days ago, he unexpectedly did. I followed him, but it was just a ruse to keep me away from his house. Really? How do you know? He went to the nearest mailbox, but just before posting his letter, he ripped it up and <laughs> threw it away. Um, I mean, maybe he saw you, but... Goodbye, Mr. Darby. Maybe he just had Farewell. a change of heart? All right, we definitely got to find Nithercott here. Uh, before I forget, I do want to change up our current uh, situation here. So I've got this Dragon Bane here. Um... But also, I think instead of the list and knife, I'm going to go back to the stake for stunning. Um, I could also even switch these up if I wanted. Instead of the dragon bane, we could do... Uh, what's the most damage? 65. I guess why would I, why would I ever switch if I don't have a better option? Maybe in this one we'll equip a gun. We have nine bullets here now. That I hopefully won't just fire off into the distance trying to reload it. Whoops. Okay, so now, find the inhabitants of Whitechapel, find the mailbox and the letter, find Richard Nithercott. Okay, there's like a lot going on here all of a sudden. Um, let's just check this real quick. So, let's go find this Richard Nithercott, and then we'll find the letter. I'm not sure if... It does seem like the um, journalist kind of was thinking, well, he knew that I was following him, but... Forgive my interruption. Do not apologize, my son. Father Tobias Whitaker is always happy to teach mortals about the incoming Armageddon. I am Dr. Jonathan Reed, and I just have a few questions. A scientist? You are much more lost than I Jesus. thought, my son. Typical heretic. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. But well, you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. The sad thing is this guy is probably the only one who knows what's going on. Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your crazy or so not called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of a decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu is just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, mm -hmm. corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. In a few ways. In my own eyes I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. Really? And what would be your answer to this biblical threat? We must fight the disease before this legion outnumbers us. But not with scalpels and microscopes. No. What is left then? Cleansing fire. Yeah, burn it all. Exactly. 
Tobias wants to cleanse the epidemic by fire. Oh, he's not even- it's not even just a f Okay. He do, he actually wants to do that. Tell me, Tobias. What exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen Jesus. from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. This is the 20th century. Fire is just the instinctive answer of a caveman facing something he does not understand. This is the 20th century. Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad and dangerous. You're nothing but a soulless butcher. A small time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. My son, if you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool. Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. And you're just up here yelling at the top of your steps. No big deal. Leaves the Vicar of St. Mary's Church, Joseph Larrabee, is preaching a false faith. Of course he does. This guy's nuts. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. But you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. I am. But the answers I seek are based on facts, not superstition. Mm. Do we have... Oh. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I sent him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. Where'd you send him? Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery. Where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. So, what I'm thinking is we, um... We'll hopefully find out this information about Darius. Um, and then we could maybe take that back to the hospital, because there's a few things back in the hospital area I want to, uh, finish up. There's people that we haven't talked to, and then there's some of those side, um, activities as well, but... Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses. Of course not. But I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London... She was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. Savage. Okay, so she was a clandestine resistant in her homeland. Gives away drugs and medicine for free. So you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's this obvious, guy. only they have the necessary moral fiber. All right, I think I've had enough of you. I have had enough for tonight. <laughs> Goodbye. Exactly. Exactly. All right, let's head behind the church. You could probably talk to her, but... Let's see if we can't find this Richard Nithercott. Oh, this is the mailbox area. Okay. Oh! <laughs> My dearest, most beloved children! 
I'm so sorry you have not heard from me for a few months. The situation in London has been difficult. I know it may sound selfish and silly when you, my children, are still living in a country consumed by war, but there is also a war going on here in England, a war against poverty and against injustice. There is a war I intend to fight despite my advanced years. This is why I am writing to you today. I won't be coming back to Romania. That probably means I won't see you again before I die. Don't be sad, my darlings. You're growing up now and you have children of your own. You know the sacrifice we sometimes must accept to make the world a better place. This is one I must make now to feel useful one more time. I wish you a long and happy life. Kiss my grandchildren for me. And remember that your father loves you all the way from this cold, damp country. I am as ever your loving father, Darius Petrescu. Okay. So he's got family in Romania. And he's basically saying that I have to stay here. And he intends to fight this war, despite being old, basically. The content of Darius' letter to his children could give me more leverage to enter. Yeah. Yeah, it could. Uh, let's check out Darius here. Um, there he is. So who are these other people in his social circle? We don't know. We know that he's the right arm of Dorothy. We know that he does not want to see his children anymore to avoid being a burden to them. Uh, interesting. Potential candidate. That's what I, that's, that's all, uh, I'm just, you know what? We're just slowly fattening people up with information before we eat them. It's locked. Are you serious? Let me see if we can go around the other side. Ooh, flower bouquet. A small flower bouquet with a voucher for a free medical checkup hidden between the flowers. Hemelia. Secretly distributes medical vouchers. Oh, and that's probably this woman then. Good evening, miss. I'm Dr. Reed. I'd like to You can see like this questions. web being built, you know? I know what you're thinking. A tall stranger who meets a girl in the street at night. <laughs> Jesus, it reeks of the penny dreadfuls. But I mean you no harm, truly. Maybe she's a mute. Melia, I know you work for Dorothy Crane. Please tell me about her secret dispensary. Not saying anything? Mm. A stubborn and yeah, mute see, maybe. comrade. Nurse Crane and Darius Petrescu have been clever. Literally nothing. I know you understand what I'm saying. Your silence has nothing to do with you being mute, does it? <laughs> okay, well. you win for now. Goodbye then. You win for now. Hey, is there another way? How do I get into this church? Like, you would think I could just, like, if I really wanted to get back there, I could just hop over, but there must be another entry point. Maybe on, Maybe from the other side? Oh, here. Ah, uh, but even still, this is gonna be blocked too, right? Yeah. I guess we might as well just Don't talk to these people, because you know damn right they're all part of something. What can Christina do for you? Oh. I'm not looking for what you're selling. We're not? <laughs> but I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I may. I'm a doctor. Look at Got that face, though. How All right, then. But be quick. Down? Though I usually get paid when I open my mouth. <laughs> Jesus. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her? She's the one that gives helpful. you your syphilis pills. I don't pills. know her, but I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania, like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people yeah. of Whitechapel. See? Everyone should respect that. Yeah. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Mm. Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room Jeez, with dark eye before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? I mean, it's a fair point. Christina, have you been examined? 
The epidemic is spreading fast in London, and you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors, or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. <laughs> your line of work does have a lot of health risks. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. You can put your own life in danger, that's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? If you knew the men I deal with, yeah, she's their not health wrong there. would not be what you'd worry about. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. I am, however, curious as to what led you into this career. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. Hmm. Could not find a decent job because she was a migrant. I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern. Okay, well what are those reasons? Come on now. Goodbye. Not gonna get it from her. Fine. Take care of yourself as best you can. Okay. Man, I'm so torn. I'm so torn on this game because there's parts that are like really interesting. Like when you start to build out this like web of people that are all interconnected, like it's really interesting. But I kind of feel that it's like, uh, like we're not doing much, you know? <laughs> like I don't know if when it's gonna, if something's gonna like pick up or like be like, oh, I can't wait to see what happens with this or that, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Like, are you guys enjoying it? Are you having fun? It's a, it's very slow. It's a lot slower than I thought it, that it would be based on the, like, first couple hours where we would, like, have a lot of, uh, there'd be combat and we are doing a bunch of things. Uh, but as soon as we hit that hospital, like, you hit this thing where it's like you want to talk to everybody and find out all these different pieces of information. But it's also kind of slow because, like, the conversations don't, like, flow that naturally and I don't know feel like you're just going through the motions a little bit but anyways let me know what you guys are thinking um I, it's it's all right i'm not i, I hope it, that it picks up soon and i'm like yes okay now i'm now we're talking that's what i'm looking for but if you guys uh have played it let me know if that happens or not and we'll uh we'll figure it out